What's up Venture Crew? In today's video, we're just gonna show you super quickly how to add this Instagram feed to your website from your Instagram account. Easy, simple, and quick, and free. Here we go. All right, quick and easy here. Let's jump right in and let's get this Instagram feed installed on your website. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're logged into our WordPress website here. We're gonna go under plugins and then add new. And I'm just gonna go up here in the search bar and type in Instagram. And there'll be a list of different plugins that come up here. The one that we're gonna use today in this tutorial is the Smash Balloon Social Photo Feed. This plugin's been around for a long time, over a million people using it, so it's a great plugin. Let's go ahead and hit install now. And that's gonna go ahead and install the Smash Balloon plugin that will pull our Instagram feed. And let's go ahead and activate that. All right, so now that we have that installed and activated, I'm gonna go ahead and click on settings here. And the settings are gonna take me uh, to this setup screen for Smash Balloon. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna go in the left menu here and I'm gonna to go to all feeds. And then we need to go ahead and click this add new button for a new feed. So let's go ahead and click add new. And the one we have available to us in this free version of the plugin is the user timeline. That's just the timeline of photos from my own Instagram feed. You can upgrade and pay for a premium version of Smash Balloon for the Instagram feed that will let you do a hashtag. So what that would be is you could put in any hashtag and a feed of posts from that hashtag would actually pull in from Instagram. But what we're gonna do today is just, this example is if you would like to just put your own or any other user's uh, timeline that you have access to, it's your own timeline of photos that would pull a feed onto your website, okay? So we're gonna keep using the user time loan, uh, timeline checked there and we're gonna go ahead and hit next. When we hit next, it's gonna ask us to add a source. So in this step, we need to go ahead and add, um, authenticate our Instagram account so that we can pull in a source of posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and add source here, and it's gonna redirect me to connect to Smash Balloon. So it asks me for my uh, personal or business type here for an account, um, and then I can log in with Instagram, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna uncheck to receive the get started emails that just send you a bunch of emails and teach you how to get started, but you're watching this tutorial to do that, so you can uncheck that as well if you'd like to. Um, and then go ahead and click log in with Instagram. And once it's um, popping up here, it's gonna ask you to log in if you're not logged in. And then if you are logged in, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna go ahead and pull in the feed from this Instagram account? I'm gonna go ahead and hit allow. And it's gonna ask you to make sure that this is your domain, that you own it, that, you know, it's just an extra security question here. So go ahead and hit yes, it's my domain. And then now we have that feed. You can see here, this uh, Move Church Atlanta is right here as the feed of Instagram posts that we're pulling in. All right, so we can go ahead and check this box because that's the feed that we want to pull in. So we're creating a feed and then hit next. Okay, it's gonna ask us um, for um, the profile picture or bio for personal accounts. Um, you can actually just say no maybe later here and just skip this step. All right, and now it's gonna walk us through how to set up the feed, okay? So what you're looking at on the right here is the actual feed of posts that are from that account on Instagram. And what you're looking at on the left here is all the different settings for setting up your feed. So let's go through the settings real quickly one by one on the left. The feed layout option is gonna ask if you wanna do a grid or one of these other options. Unfortunately, the carousel, masonry, and highlight options are only in the paid version. So if you wanna do a carousel, which is that single line where it goes back and forth, or a masonry, which is like the offset boxes, or highlight where it's one big picture and then a bunch of little ones around it, you, you'll need to upgrade to the paid version. But for today, we're just gonna keep it to grid. We can set a feed height if we want to. So if we want it just to be a certain height for some reason on our website, we can set a feed height here. So we could put in like a thousand pixels and that will just show us, you know, it'll be a thousand pixels high. So if you have a specific height you want it to be for some reason, you could do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that out for now. It's just gonna do, you know, all the photos basically expanded. You can adjust your padding uh, as far as how much padding you want in between each picture. So what that does is obviously you can see it makes the gutters in between the pictures a different size. So you can go up or down on the padding. Let's go ahead and leave it there. You can also set the number of posts. So to me, I think this is actually probably too many posts. It's gonna take up too much space on my website, especially on mobile. So I'm gonna go ahead and limit this to just eight posts. So what that's gonna do is cut it down to two rows of four. And I think that's a lot cleaner and I really like that look better. 
Uh, you want to do the same for mobile. So you want to make sure if you're cutting it down to um, the number of desktop posts, you could adjust that you can make more on mobile or less on mobile. If I were you, a recommendation here is for designing websites. If you're putting an Instagram feed on your website, you probably want to put less on mobile than you do on desktop, just because on, on desktop, you can see all eight nice and easy here, like you see on my computer screen. But as you can see, when we go to mobile here, if we look at our mobile view, which was uh, toggled by this thing up here, that's a lot of scrolling on your phone to get through all those pictures. So you should probably, um, with desktop, let's stick with eight. For mobile, I would say let's cut it to four. That way when we go to mobile here, we're just seeing four images here. So it's a, lot, a little bit less for the user to scroll through if they're trying to get through all this stuff on your website. All right, and then columns here, um, we can um, do the number of columns we wanna do here as well. So let's go back and look at desktop view here. If you wanted to do maybe three columns, it'll do thirds, just like that. Uh, two columns is gonna be bigger. Obviously, you can just kinda adjust the number of columns that you wanna do. So let's go ahead and keep it to four. That'll be nice. And then you could adjust your columns on tablet and mobile as well, which is great. All right, so the next uh, section we can um, play with is the color scheme. So it can inherit a color scheme from the theme, which is pretty cool. So that's just kind of like a couple different colors that are set here. Um, you can do light, which is, adds a white box on it, as you can see there in the back, a dark color scheme, which puts that dark mode um, on the back, and then custom, you can actually set, select custom colors in here. So if you wanted to do red, which doesn't look all that great, um, all that kind of stuff, you can kind of grab your own color scheme if you wanted to do that. Um, the theme we're using does have like a purple um, kind of overview to it. So I might throw purple on there, except, you know, the buttons, um, I don't want to have to mess with these button colors, although I can if I wanted to make them, um, you know, something that looked okay on top of purple, like that green there. Um, and then we could just make that same color maybe for our other button. So that looks okay um, to go on top of the purple. I think for right now, I'm actually just going to get rid of these and just keep it kind of transparent on top of the white section that we have it sitting on on top of our site. Okay. Uh, next is going to be the different sections. So in the header here, you can enable or disable that. Um, I actually like it better without that kind of, you know, Instagram tag at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and disable the header. So it's just the photos, which I like better. Um, and then you have a bunch of other options here. Many of these are actually uh, advanced options though. So uh, a bunch of these are header settings that we got rid of when we uh, disabled the header. But if you wanna keep the header enabled, you can, and you can adjust the size. You can make it a little bit smaller, which looks better there. You could use a custom avatar in here. So you could grab an image from your uh, media library and use that as well. So if we wanted to just grab our logo here, you can see it uses that instead of that custom avatar where you can clear that out. I think we're just gonna leave it that way. I'm actually, again, gonna disable the header because I like it cleaner this way, uh, but there's lots of different headers there. You boxed, center, different styles you can do in the header, okay? Uh, the posts, um, you can just go through and um, you can change like the size of the posts if you want or whatever type size you want it to use of your posts. Um, you can choose whether or not you want to have a load, load more button there. So if load more is going to actually load more pictures from your feed each time you hit it. So if the user hits that load more button, it's going to load more pictures down this, down the page. This helps with site speed because you can just leave it there, let it load just eight by default. And if they want to load more to look at more, they can. But in general, this is usually just used on websites as kind of a general, Hey, here's Instagram. What's going on on my website. All right. So let's keep the load more button there. Um, the follow button is also there as well. Um, you can hide that also if you wanted to. I like to keep it there in case somebody does wanna follow me on Instagram from seeing my Instagram feed. So I'm gonna go leave that, but you can change the colors of that as well here. So if you wanna edit those colors, um, you can do that. Lightbox is a pro feature, but that's gonna allow you to click on one of the images in the Instagram feed and it'll pop up in a light box there. Okay, so let's say that I like how this looks. I'm happy with it. I'm ready to go ahead and get it embedded on my site. So the next step we're gonna take here is to use this embed button up in the top right. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit embed and it's gonna let me copy this short code. This is called a short code. We're actually not gonna need to use this, but I'm gonna copy it just in case. That way I have it in case for some reason I can't find the section I need to add in the block editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy here and I'm gonna X out here, and then I'm going to uh, save my changes to make sure everything is saved um, on the page. So you wanna make sure you hit save there to make sure everything's saved, and I'm gonna to go to my pages list, okay? So for me, I actually want to um, add this feed um, onto my, um, my home page. all right? 
Okay, so here on the home page, um, I'm sorry, on the pages list, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, find my home page, and I'm just using the default Gutenberg block editor here with the Astra theme. So for you, it might be find your page and then open it in your page builder, whatever page builder you're using, you're gonna wanna open up the page to edit it in that page builder. For me, I'm just using the default Gutenberg, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit here over home. And it's gonna open up my home page here, and I'm gonna see all the different sections. And again, this is just using the def default Gutenberg editor. If you were using Elementor, or Be Beaver Builder, or Bloxy, or Cadence, or um, Oxygen, or Brizzy, or one of the other WordPress page builders, you're gonna to wanna to open up the page you're editing in that editor, okay? So here, um, uh, the plugin does a really cool thing. It actually gives me um, a block that I can add to pull in the Instagram feed. So that way I don't have to use the short code that we copied in the previous version. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here. I think I want to add my Instagram feed down at the bottom here So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this plus right here uh, in the Gutenberg editor here And I'm going to I see my Instagram feed is here But that's because I recently used it if you don't see it You're gonna search Instagram and you're gonna see Instagram feed is your block that's available. So I hit Instagram feed and there we go. It dumps the Instagram feed right in there. Okay, so that looks great and I can update that and then what I'm gonna do um, after I update that is I'm going to view my page on the front end and I can see here that I have my Instagram feed on my site. However, there's one last thing that I just want to, so you may be cool with that and that's good to leave it that way. If you load more, you can see you're going to get more images from the feed here. So that's great. I feel like I probably need a little bit of like a title in that section and a little bit of space. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these other titles from up above and just add it in above the Instagram feed here just to kind of give it nice um, title there above everything else. So I'm just going to scroll up and find the title that's up here um, that I'm going to kind of duplicate and I'm going to go ahead and just hit this three dot menu and then I'm going to duplicate. And then from my duplicated title here, I'm just going to grab it to drag it. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to drop it right at the top here. So you can see here it drops right at the top. I'm going to go ahead and center that title because I think it looks better centered. centered. So I'm going to hit my align text center. Okay, that's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and change my title here to um, the latest from Instagram, which is great. Now, I just need a little bit of space in here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and add some padding. So I'm gonna select it, and then I'm gonna go under block here. You have page or block, I'm gonna go under block, and I'm gonna go under dimensions, and then I'm gonna go padding. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add, slide the slider to add my padding here. So this is gonna go ahead and add padding for me so that spreads out a little bit. That's perfect, I think that looks really nice and has um, some padding added there for me so that it's nice and spaced out and it lets me know that that's the Instagram feed for my website. I'm gonna go ahead and update and I'm gonna go on the front end here and refresh and there we go. I've got my nice title there and my Instagram feed dumped right onto my homepage um, of my new website here and we're done and ready to go. And as I update new Instagram posts, on my Instagram feed, this is automatic now. So if I add a new picture to my Instagram feed and I go back to my website, you're gonna see that that new picture is gonna show up right there on the site and um, I can then have that automatically there for, uh, for the, as long as I wanna have it on my website. Hope this was helpful for you today. If you have any questions, let us know down below in the comments. We'll do our best to help out. Please, come back, please like and subscribe on the WP Venture YouTube channel down below. It really helps us and helps the channel out and we hope you have an awesome day building your WordPress website. Cheers.